Trade not aid, the new mantra of the devils and house negroes. Misinformation is a necessity for evil to exist. Vague statements like trade not aid are calculated misinformation designed to control the thought patterns of unthoughtful people. There is a lot more trade than aid between Africa and America or the West in general. And if they are calling for zero or less aid to Africa, then why is our humanity towards a place where children die due to hunger and malnutrition? When I use the term devils, I do not mean white people, but any person in power to change and chooses otherwise. President Obama is an example of a devil who will spend billions of dollars to kill people, but will refuse standard-based aid to Africa and echoes trade not aid. Likewise, by house Negroes, I do not mean just the millions of black Americans who are waiting for the 1% masters to help Africa, but also like the middle class African who echoed the exact time during Obama's 2013 town hall meeting in South Africa. To justify why I choose a hard title, I want to share some historical facts. Beyond race, this is a wall of few good men, fewer evil men, and bunch of followers. The fewer evil men has always hated African and Africans the most. Religious folks will claim it started with Satan, who claims he is better than who is made of black mud. I will skip thousands of years and remind you when a fraction of white people were given power over all people, they choose to oppress black folks the most. They did it with lies because they were caring white folks who were asking questions. Although most white folks choose indifference then, some bought the lies and others fought with black people to ultimately end slavery. The history books generalize it as white folks enslaved black people, but that is not very accurate. There were many white folks who couldn't afford slaves and some who choose to stay away. Then colonization, again, they choose to rob Africa the most and leave the least of of western blessings. Then post-independence, choose to invest and transfer technologies to Asia while discouraging investment in Africa with exaggerated lies. Although the fewer evil women were mostly white, it is hardly based on color, but the victims remainly remain to be likely Africans. The categories are more important and you must ask yourself, are you buying lies or choosing indifference heartlessly? Are you trying to free the victims with meaningful efforts? Globalization is important, but it must be beyond trade. Trade is a sub-branch of working, and we need globalization based on learning, working, and having fun in a let's world. We need to help anyone who is ready to learn, work, and respect this have fun beyond self. Anything less will haunt us beyond our conscience. I will never encourage free handouts to lazy adult Africans or any people and will gladly initiate or support measures that demand more responsibility from adult Africans. However, the children are making small encouraging steps that require patience and gradual weaning. African problems cannot be solely blamed on Africans nor on yesterday wrongs. After all, we have to grow from searching who to blame to learning how to help with strong optimism and understanding of common aspirations. The real priorities of Africa must first be identified and they are not what the Western world is urging or helping Africa on. Democracy, gay rights, Africa, Western paid experts, etc. cannot be imposed on Africans with dictatorial approach. All help to Africa must be classified on the learning, working, or having fun. Education-based help like Peace Corps can be classified on the learning. AFRICOM and paid Western experts are on the working. Food donations are on the having fun, or rescued aid is minimal fun, basically. It is very important to have a vivid systematic base that is less debatable than accept their vague terms. This will enforce all of us to truly understand the best way to help and if they are truly helping us or helping themselves. What is the best way to help Africa learn? 
my first recommendation my first recommendation for Africa to learn is to have good internet access with and with reasonable fees like countries initiate and ratify agreements on different things we can have African countries sign on for a renew, renewable 25 year agreement the primary purpose is to help encourage distance learning when we set up testing centers with global curriculum and global testing standards, peace corps existed for a long time, and I admire their contribution, but any honest peace corps volunteer will admit this approach will help the world in many respects. The secondary benefits include gradual improvement on democracy. More educated people through the internet will make censorship impossible and not every African country can afford NSA type of budget. There are some other things that we can utilize like you know having a network, a television network, uh, geared toward African interests, and uh, geared toward learning more than having fun. You know we cannot have things like the big kind of network and call it black television. No. We need something that will be similar to CNN, similar to Al Jazeera, but different geared towards African interests. Africa needs more working opportunities that the Western world are less likely to offer. I blame African culture and mindset the most on work problems in Africa, but it is not befitting to detail it here. Western governments are creating working opportunities for themselves in Africa and calling it it. Africa is primarily for spying an aspect of learning and secondarily for working opportunities for western for western citizens and western interests they classify it as security aid but that is a sub classification with questionable purpose just like the imf just like the imf will send tax experts as aid in countries with over 50% unemployment rate but will not send engineers and other scientists to build factories for jobs and more taxes from working people. Every suspecting mind should question if the right experts are ever sent to Africa. Are they not indifferently creating problems and using Africa to train how to suppress angry and hungry jobless youths who are overtaxed through sales tax and beyond? I have always said it is not it is a lot easier to tame an educated populace who may be jobless than an uneducated populace with limited hopes for working opportunities. So a great security help must force exclude, must not ever, must never exclude educating the general public. Rather than food donation to Africa and other poor places, we need to help them on how to grow more food. Luckily, I have been blessed with a smart idea called the Bada for Screen Fence, and more information on it is available on cl.net, that's S I I A L dot N E T, and on YouTube as well. In a nutshell, rather than creating spacey greenhouses, we need to build green fences. Vertical gardening through green fence will allow the widest participation and greatest yield known to humankind yet. We will ascertain worldwide food surplus and increase research opportunities, among other things. Most aid to Africa should be through the border for screen fence. We can build the factories anywhere, but preferably in Africa. Then we can gradually move away from many types of aid. Your heartless mantra can then be refined without causing heart attacks beyond the hungry. Even though the mainstream media is accusing African government in tones that turn off some donors, there are still some caring folks, mostly of European origin, who are donating to charitable organizations. Germany may have cruel immigration laws against Africans and turning them to criminals. Still, many Germans are sincerely caring towards Africans. The Federal Republic of Germany, the FRG Water Project, dug many wells that I personally benefited from as a teenager. Few days ago, I saw on TV how some Germans came to the Gambia to train an institution on how to make mango jam. Gambia has food problems, but we have a lot of mangoes that get spoiled due to lack of knowledge. 
I have little interest talking about the evil Hitler did or said, but I cannot spare Obama and the new house Negroes who echo trade not it. Are they trying to discourage those Germans from coming to Gambia? Aiding poor people on food and education can only lead to fairer trade and better things. In contrast, when the Gambia was claimed by the West as one of the most democratic countries in Africa, I cannot remember any significant project by the United States, UK, Australia, Canada, or any of the major Western countries in the Gambia. The UK, as the colonial master, built us an alcohol brewing factory when there was not a single university or television in the country. What is their priority? The United States, UK, and Canada had more friendly immigration policies than Germany and other countries towards Africans in general. People were allowed to work legally even with minimal documentation, and that means no need to resort to strict ways of generating income. We owe them some kind of thank you for those relaxed days. But will they ever admit that millions of Africans paid billions of dollars on taxes that benefited such countries? I personally remember the social security tax was the highest tax I paid in the United States. It is a non-refundable tax and how many millions of Africans live before all age? Indeed, some ordinary citizens in the mentioned countries are helping, but similar unchallenged message like trade, not aid, are reducing their numbers. I have personally experienced I have personal experience of it through Plan Canada, a charitable organization I was seeking donations for. I am appealing on the caring hearts in these countries to understand help is still needed. Choose a charitable organization of your choice or come over to Africa, like the mentioned Germans who are helping those who suffered worse than what Hitler did to the Jews. We had series of action-oriented Hitlers against Africa, and we have at least one in action-oriented Hitler against Africa, who is vaguely urgent for less owner aid to Africa in the subconscious minds of people. Obama and his house Negroes, including whites, can afford billions to Israel, billions to Arab Egypt as aid to Africa, billions to destroy countries more than Hitler with millions on military budget, millions to South Africa, and few millions to the rest of black Africa. The real aid to black Africa, not the exaggerated one, is very few millions per year for how many countries? Beside the billions in trade through natural resources, Africa buys billions from America. There are tens of thousands of African businessmen who, are, who still buy from America, but we are waking up to try the U.S. companies in Asia and the technologies you transfer to them. We still have to use the dollars when shopping in China, and that is helping the U.S. And thanks to the devil called Richard Nixon, how many containers ordinary Africans send from the United States in a month? Or don't you consider that trait? You avoid buying from Africa as evident in your subsidy for U.S. farmers. When Obama said trade not aid, does he mean for America to open up her market to Africans or for Africans to buy more from America as he mentioned? We certainly have trade than aid. Rather than Obama trying to impose gay rights on Africans, you need to look at what are our priorities if you truly love us. Pressure and help the African governments to regulate internet costs. Help us set up more urban gardening means like Badafoss Green Fence. Help us set up new few factories for working opportunities. I understand the exchange student he proposed can help a bit, but to what kind of universities is he sending our people to and how many Africans will benefit? Even if it was drawing brains to MIT, it would have been better to bring MIT technologies to African universities to boost quality minds. The recommended internet access will help in both quality and quantity of students we can help. 
Within days or weeks, Obama can mobilize countries to pour billions of dollars into a war based on lies and call it a need. Food is the more evident need based on humanity and you can certainly mobilize countries towards a lasting eradication of food shortages around the world. The other devils, Saudi royals, can be publicly challenged because they are hypocrites. Saudi Arabia offered millions to reach MIT. That was turned down but never redirected to poor universities in poor Muslim countries or atheist countries. They are eager to build mosques as gift, but the Quran recommends food and education based on education based aids even to atheists more than most building. Many Western countries are in many respects more Islamic than Saudi Arabia and many other Arab countries. The European Union should be approached publicly as well because the public is generally better than the leaders. MIT University reportedly have the technology of using data to make objects. They are sharing the technologies but choosing which countries to share with. We need to share with more countries, at least on food production and education oriented projects. African countries can also be pressurized in many ways. For example, a fraction of all international trade of natural resources can be taxed to a special bank to help charitable organizations beyond Africa. IMF's partnership with many poor countries have not been very fruitful. We need a different type of IMF dealing with charitable organizations only rather than governments. Somebody came up with the IMF idea and exchange student ideas. Will Obama keep copying or accept smarter innovations like the ones mentioned on food, education, and charitable organization funding. After decades of transferring technologies to Asia, when Secretary of State Ms. Clinton was appointed and sent to Asia, she declared, I quote, I came to Asia Force for a reason, unquote, meaning Asia is a top priority. Obama also declared the trade not aid mantra in Africa force for a reason. Anyone who truly understands capitalism will understand what my college economics professor taught me in the United States. He said capitalism, even when functioning at its best, will need some jobless people who will need help. So he and many other smart minds will never condone no aid mantra even in the United States. Some people in the United States need it, and much more people outside America need it. So I will urge you to fight back whenever you hear the devilish mantra. May God bless soul of Trinity. Let's learn. Let's work. Let's have fun. Thank you.